Hey, it's Chris. Luigi Games. Let's do this. What's coming up next week? What are you going to be missing out on if you don't know what's going on? Uh, as always, I mean, Gen Con is going on right now. I'm clearly not at Gen Con. I'm clearly working all weekend. Uh, yeah. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I, I just find it weird that I'm already in a situation where I'm paying for games that I'm not playing as opposed to paying for additional games that I can play. <laughs> I know the community, the community, the community. Uh, everyone networks there and all that stuff. So I understand it as well at the same time. Uh, you're already starting to see all these uh, gotcha, hotness, look what I bought posts on social media. You know, it is what it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's about it. I'll, I think I'm going to do that news video that I talked about yesterday of the uh, Gen Con announcements just so you can go to one place and get a lot of them because otherwise there's a lot scattered all over the place and a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But let's do this. What's on the horizon for next week? Like, comment, or subscribe? Yeah, 5K. Let's do this. The first up is a 1-4 to four player game, and these are all launching on the 21st, so I'll put that out right at the beginning called Light in the Mist. It's going to be a combination of a tarot game and a card game where you have 56 minor arcana cards and 22 major arcana cards that you're going to be using. And one of those types are going to be more puzzly in nature. If you go on over to the Board Game Geek page, you can see a little bit of what these cards may look like. You're going to be trying to manipulate and use logic on these puzzle cards in order to unlock the narrative that they are trying to to tell. It is solo and cooperative in nature. Now the big question I guess I'd have is replayability because they say there's about five hours worth of gameplay. And then what? Well, I'm guessing it's sort of like an escape room game because it doesn't sound like you're necessarily going to be able to do these puzzles more than once uh, with these cards. Now they said it's non-linear, so that's a plus, but what is the price point going to look like for a deck of cards with limited replayability a la something like Time Stories-ish? Uh, we'll see when it launches on the 21st. Next up, this is Cranky Chinchillas. Uh, this is of the Unstable Unicorns ilk. And it has just been plastered all over social media in terms of ads, at least from what I've seen, like on, especially on Facebook. I mean, you can see the vibe that you have right here too. I mean, that's very much what it reminds me of. And it gives you a quick overview summary. Now you can play four to six, but up to eight with the expansions. And you're just dividing into different teams and trying to figure out who's a friend, who's a foe, and basically do a lot of take that with it. Alliances, betrayals, uh, using your cast of flurry, fluffy heroes. So there you go. A little bit of everything in terms of the action cards you're going to be playing and a little bit of everything else. They don't actually have a rule book up here, so there's not a whole lot of information. The Board Game Geek page actually has less. So Yeah. I reached out to them probably like a month or two ago and just out of curiosity to see if they had any copies, uh, but they said all the preview copies are already out. So um, it looks interesting. It looks entailing for a light style game uh, akin to, like I said, Unstable Unicorns or maybe Here to Slay. Here to Slay might be a better comparison, I guess. And so if that is your style, I mean, these have definitely done well in the past. And I don't know if this has any affiliation with a larger brand um, like some of those other ones did originally. So they got a little bit, you know, heavier traction, but uh, it's launching on the 21st. It looks slightly different than the other variations of those games that I mentioned. So we'll see how it does and what happens when it launches. Next up is Cthulhu Island, your weekly dose of Lovecraftian mythos. Now this is <laughs> a completely different spin on this uh, one to four player game where you're building basically a Cthulhu Lovecraftian uh, theme park and you're just trying to explore, expand and create based on your cultists are your resource. And in order to do that, you're gathering magical power, you're expanding your base, you're expanding your literal zones of influence and you're just trying to create the most chaotic Cthulhu-esque theme park that the world has ever seen. Now, the interesting thing, if you go over to the page itself, at the bottom of the description here, they actually say, you win by publicity. Explore. So they're kind of doing the 4X here, or the 4E. <laughs> I really is what it is. Explore, enlist, entice, and exterminate. So definitely going to be some take that, potentially some, some interactions. But there also uh, is going to be some worker placement. So worker placement area majority, rather than just sort of an Amerithrash chaotic style of game. 
and whether or not that appeals to you, um, well, you're just going to have to check it out. But, I mean, there's also going to be dice. So that's the weird thing, right? When you have those descriptions and you've also got dice going on, how is that going to work? Are people going to be enticed by that? I don't know. Interesting, though. We'll see when it launches on the 21st. Next up is Treasure Cats. As if we didn't have enough animal-themed games already, here's another. This is a completely different sort of social deduction, uh, party-esque style game for three to nine people, where each turn, your character, as an anthropom anthropomorphic cat, is going to one of two areas. And at that area, you choose to find or take, essentially, an artifact that is worth a certain number of points. And at the end of the round, the area that has the most points, those people there get a victory point. First one to five wins but you are going to have asymmetric abilities or actions that you can take at each of those areas that is going to influence said values or cards in the first place there are three phases of how you're going to play that and so it's just really straightforward low overhead party stylist game with a anthropomorphic anthropomorphic i can't pronounce the word but anthropomorphic anthropomorphic cats that is a tongue twister of a word. Let me tell you how many tries that took to actually get that to take. So anyway, launching on the 21st. We'll see what happens with it. There you go. Now, interestingly, next up is Stuff of Legend. And they've kept this one a little bit close to the vest. Uh, they really have been advertising it for quite some time. I think I got delayed. And so it's finally launching here on the 21st. And it is based on the graphic novel. If you're not familiar with it, it is where set in the timetable of World War II, while that fighting is going on on a different front, a child has been kidnapped and taken to the area known as the Dark. And you are the playing, and you are playing as the children's, the child's toys and going on a rescue mission, essentially. And you are trying to rescue the child from the boogeyman. And so this is an interesting player count. It is three to six players doing this in missions, uh, trying to, uh, you know, eventually rescue the child. And the interesting aspect of this is not only are you going to be hopefully seeing standees like here in the picture, so maybe not as miniature based um, as this sort of gives me a little bit of stuffed fables vibe at the same time and mice versus mice and mystics. But you also have a very interesting wound track here that you're going to be using to take care of sort of tracking things, as well as most importantly, you can see right here, this loyalty card where your loyalty is initially out to the child at the beginning, but it can switch throughout the game and be loyal to the boogeyman instead. There's not really a whole lot of other information known about this. I reached out to them a few months ago, uh, but they've been pretty tight lipped about uh, what to expect and on that side of things. But they did have some review copies out there for quite some time. I think for probably almost even maybe six months when they post on Board Game Geek. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how many videos there are. I think there's probably going to be a good amount. And so hopefully we'll get a better sense of what this looks like and if it compares to something like Mice and Mystics or if it's something completely different than they say that and stuffed fables. I, I don't really know what to expect with this one. Uh, especially when it's going up against a couple of the other open world games like Splendid Veil vale later this month as well. So I'm interested to see. I want to hear more about it, but ultimately I just don't know because we just don't have enough information. So if you're interested like I am, check it out when it launches on the 28th. So we have Snake the Board Game. This is based on the classic Snake the Video Game, which apparently is about 45 years old at this point. That's pretty incredible, actually. Now they say they're just taking the classic game as a computer game or console game, if you will, and morphing it into the actual video game where you are eating these dots to get longer and you change your speed and you're trying to basically cut off your opponent from doing what they need to do so that they fizzle out and can't move. And so again, there's not a whole lot of information, but you can see the grid that you're going to be having here in terms of being able to set it up and the area in which you're going to be going to two to four players. So again, how is that going to work? Is it going to work well as a two, three, and four? Is there going to be a better mode? Is there going to be sort of, you know, what sort of dynamic is going to actually happen? They're trying to stay true to the video game. So that's always a tricky proposition as well. Now you can go over to their website and you can actually play it online against the computer. So again, if you want to try it out beforehand, there you go. And it gives a little bit of everything that you need to know on this page. This is their own personal page. Like it says, you're still trying to eat things, grow longer, shift the speed downward, it morphs into something else. You have to get creative. And it's just kind of an interesting project, uh, more of an abstract-esque game. And so just from that side of things, I am probably going to be checking this out, even though I really wasn't planning on it. Just kind of an interesting, different concept. And uh, we'll see what it does when it launches on the 21st. Next up, 
launching on the 21st is Myth and Goal, sort of a fantasy version-esque of football. Not that football, American football. I mean, they literally say this game is based off of fantasy football, like not just like fantasy football, but like fantasy, high fantasy-esque Tolkien style football and so you're taking one of these races and you're going against each other either trying to throw the ball through the goalposts or run it in for extra points it's a one to two player game so you can play it head to head or you can play it against an ai it's miniature based it's going to be interesting to see how many teams that they come out with to begin with i mean obviously it looks like there's four on that first page i would assume that's what's going to be there when it launches but i'm interested to see how many expansions or anything like that comes with it already from the get-go they say not only is there going to be asymmetry between the teams and the players, but you're going to be able to draft, even maybe doing like an all-star team from several different teams if you really want to play in a different mode. Here you can see a little bit of the sample setup, and it's just got another interesting vibe when it comes to this in terms of the die rolling and the players on the field, as well as the significantly reduced action zone there, uh, as you would not expect in a typical uh, football field in that sense. So it'd be interesting to see how some of these mechanics work. And you can kind of see how these cards already got at the, sort of the four different stats that you're going to be needing to know, as well as, I'm assuming, an asymmetric ability. And actually, it looks like they even have six stats. So, again, it's probably going to be too much for me from, like, a skirmish-style game. I mean, because that's really what it is. And so uh, it'll be just interesting to see what the price point is and how this is received. I have no clue on something fantasy sports-based is going to achieve or fail I, I just don't know i have no idea i would assume since miniature and this seems to have a good pedigree with several other similar games uh the larger miniature market it's going to do relatively well but i don't know backers be backers sometimes and we'll see what happens when it launches now last up we have quests and cannons the risen islands and again, I've seen this one pop up on social media for a while. They did a really good job of promoting this one and getting people involved. And they had sent out a bunch of uh, review copies or preview copies like a couple months ago. They were asking for people on not only on Reddit, but Facebook and just, you know, really making it look appealing from that side of things. So we're going to finally see what the finished product is. And this is a very interesting game because this is another seafaring game uh, of the recent trend that we've seen in several others. You can see in this one to six player hex based strategy game that you are going to be trying to explore these mysterious new islands that have all of a sudden popped out of the ocean. You are from one of three major kingdoms that are going to explore because you've heard rumors that there is a very powerful artifact that, you know, your kingdom kind of wants to have over the other ones. And so you're going to be exploring, you're going to be doing combat, you're going to be doing a little bit of everything in between in order to find it first. Quests, resources, map clues loot and fire cannons at each other because i mean you can't put it in the name and not have it be a mainstay of the mechanics here so we'll kind of see what that entails too it's interesting because i wasn't kidding about them coming out with like copies and copies and copies if you go over to the page there's actually 10 reviews or under reviews previews that are already on there so that's very interesting as well as look at all these videos i mean i wasn't kidding when they said they had all this stuff out i mean and all of this is months ago right this is three four five months ago so not like just in the last week or something i mean this is all you know much further than that so again it's got a little bit of everything in there i think the aesthetic is very appealing i just worry about the mechanics i'm not sure the mechanics are quite of what i would like i'm just not a lot of this quest explorer you know area of management sort of style of games most of the time so it'd be interesting to see what this actually entails again i think there's gonna be a ton of information like i said there's only 10 previews or reviews ish copies out there in terms of the forums so again dearth of information um should not be the issue here so uh whether or not it's right for you is more of the issue in general uh but we'll see and like i said i mean at this point you've got a bunch of these reviews which are ranging uh, anywhere from about 16 minutes to 50 minutes if you want a little bit more of a solo run playthrough. So a little bit of everything in between. Yeah. Lots of previews, lots of information. Be tons more when it launches. So if you're interested, I mean, this one might be the one to watch for the week. So check it out when it launches. Next up and last, truly last this time, I swear, I promise, Artisans of Splendent Vale, which is also launching on the 24th. This is a two to four player sort of cooperative storytelling legacy-esque, sort of maybe open world-esque game too, uh, that's launching and going to be sort of an interesting uh, proposition because I'm not really sure where it's going to fall. I've seen copies floating around on social media of pictures of it, and like it's a Gloomhaven-esque size box, and I just don't have a clue. It seems more like Mythwind or Stardew Valley 
in that sense where you're doing more of the crafting side of things as opposed to the exploring and the fighting and the fantasy and that sort of thing. I mean, it says that there are definitely tactical action scenes, but what does that actually mean? There's been a relatively small supply of information that's been trickling out. You can see a few of the pictures, but there's not even any videos, so they're keeping it closely tight to vest in that sense. So I wonder if they've got an embargo on some of the information. You can see some of the pictures, though, up on Board Game Geek. So you can see it's got sort of this spiral-bound area uh, booklet. Now, with meeples in the Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion-esque setup, which is also appealing. And then you can see down here you have your individual characters with different ways that they've been affected, a weapon or a characteristic that they may have, and sort of what else goes along with them. So you can kind of see that each of these characters almost has their own book in terms of how you're keeping track. So I guess the question would be how legacy-esque is this? How easy is it to jump in and jump out? You've obviously got some AI here in terms of the bad guys you're going against that are on the map and how you're going to interact in those action scenes, which looks very Gloomhaven-esque in terms of the, maybe just the setup and some of the AI there, but it's kind of hard to tell in this picture. And then you're obviously going to have some dice rolling too. And, you know, are you a fan of the dice rolling? Uh, because that's, I mean, uh, why pe a lot of people love Gloomhaven, right? There is no dice rolling. It's mitigation and using those cards to the best of your ability as opposed to being stuck to a random die roll to determine your fate. Again, I think this one has the potential to be obviously the biggest one of the week, but this is a massive box, so I'm assuming it's going to be a massive price. Now, obviously, with meeples instead of miniatures and some of this narrative, narrative side of things, I would expect it maybe to be a little bit offset less-wise in that sense. But otherwise, I have no idea. I have no idea what this is going to look like, how it's going to be received. I know all the big channels have got it. So the question just is, is it for you then, I guess, based on the information that's going to be out there. But again, there's no reviews. There's no comments. There's no videos. So I'm expecting it to all go live essentially like probably maybe a couple days before. But I wouldn't be surprised if even like the day before or the day of the campaign. So all in all, it's going to be interesting to see. It's from Renegade Games. So... They're putting out a lot of stuff lately. What's going to happen with this one? How's it compare? We'll see when it launches on the 21st. So that's it. That's all I got right now. Um, it's been a relatively uneventful week. Uh, just I binged. I binged the Marvel Disney shows. So over in the next week, I'm hopefully going to have out uh, the combination of videos that I mentioned. The Marvel trifecta comparison between Champions, Legendary, and United, as well as the follow-up of what did I actually think of the three Marvel series of Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, and WandaVision? You'll see. But, I mean, that's about all I got into. I mean, I didn't really watch a whole lot else. I kind of got through the first episode of the season three or four of The Expanse. I Four. Four. And I'm watching a few other small things here and there. Nothing, you know, notable or nothing else really to write home about right now. I mean, I'm just kind of in between stuff, you know, where you've got this kind of lull and nothing's really super attractive to you. Uh, the only thing that's really caught my eye and I've been keeping up with is Reservation Dogs uh, on Hulu. Uh, sort of, you know, the reserva Reservoir Dogs sort of play on things, but only they're kids of a Indian tribe on a reservation. So uh, it's a little bit coarse, but it's a little bit staring at tugging at the heartstrings as well at the same time so it's really well done i enjoy from that side of things and i think i just saw like archer is out too i gotta catch up on archer but that's about all i got video wise and in terms of show wise and that sort of thing um yeah like i said hopefully the gen con news video at some point in the next couple days as well and maybe a review or two i really need to finish up a couple of those because i got more stuff coming in from a Kickstarter side of things, but also from a retail side of things. So I need to get a few of those out there. Uh, we'll kind of see. We'll go from there. And uh, I'll let you know. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. I'll probably have my Mythic Mischief review out this next week as well. So I'm getting a couple more plays in on that. And hopefully I can give you my full thoughts on that as it winds down. So as always, if you made it this far, thank you very much. Thank you for clicking, commenting, or even, you know, the most helpful thing sometimes, uh, viewing. And, you know, subscribing helps too. Still going for that 5,000 by the end of the year. We'll see if I make it. I'm not looking so positive right now, but I'm going for it. Let's go for it. Boom. And we'll just see what happens. As always, have a great day. Hopefully your weekend's going better than mine. And stay classy out there. See you around.